Hello, everybody. Welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Show. And finally, Bristol City have announced that Dean Holden is going to be their new manager after lots of uh, procrastination and um, many, many weeks now since Lee Johnson when Holden, who was Lee Johnson's assistant, has been upgraded, promoted into the job and Bristol City will go forward with Dean Holden at the helm. Get your comments in on what you think of that appointment and I'll go through a bit of the timeline and not that it's a lot, what I do know about uh, Dean Holden. Um, so it was 4th of July, um, there it is there, Lee Johnson sacked as head coach of Bristol City and that was after a home defeat to Cardiff. Obviously, Johnson had been there a fair old while, I think four complete seasons or thereabouts by that point. Um, he kind of had a bit of a mixed reputation in the championship. There were good points and there were these splurges of good form and you think, oh, Bristol City are really going somewhere and then you get the streaky lead business coming back again and they'd lose some games. But generally, um, he's, he was seeming to have them going in the right direction and there was just always a bit of a sense that um, whilst they were, he always used to say in his press conferences about being sustainable and progressing and you just felt that once the progression stopped and maybe they dropped down a few places rather than raising up a few places from their previous season, that he was going to be gone. That proved to be the case. And you can very clearly see the ambition of Steve Lansdowne and the Bristol City owners there. Because if we stop the clocks when Johnson was fired, you can see, look at the distance between them and sixth place Cardiff in the playoffs. It seems quite clear to me. Another example, very similar to Alex Neal at Norwich a few seasons ago, an example of a manager working with a team that should be challenging for playoffs. And at that exact point where they're no longer going to get in there, look, nine points off with five to go, out he goes. But as I said already, that was 37 days ago and a lot of water has passed under the bridge since. Obviously, there were still five games to go. So Dean Holden takes the job and Unlikely as it may seem, look, he won the first two games, um, a draw in the next, so seven points from three. So realistically, going into that Swansea game, I think Bristol City still had a chance, certainly going into the previous game with the two straight wins, they definitely would have. Um, but you can see that it's a defeat against Swansea City, who were the ones to capitalise. I keep saying this season, the narrative was Leeds were very good. West Brom were good and had a good manager and some parachute financial money, um, some financial sort of muscle. Um, then Brentford and Fulham were, 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 were good working towards, you know, that sort of elite. And then it was much of a much this. In the end, Cardiff and Swansea got in. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it looked like whoever was just going to make the late run and um, be there when the music stopped would have had a chance in the playoffs. Strangely, that could have been Bristol City. Um, big links then come up for Chris Hewton. Um, you can see this article here. Um, we looked and it, we thought that um, he was ahead of the crowd. And I mean, Talk Sport and Sky Sports, they're reporting that, you know, a deal was going to be done. Obviously, that turned out to be jumping the gun. Um, this report says um, not the only candidate for the vacant head coach job, speaking to eight different applicants. So um, this idea that Bristol City had worked their way up into, you know, the, the playoff area of the league, got everything set up, the stadium had been built up, they'd, um, you know, sort of bridged a bit of the gap between them and the parachute teams with some good recruitment. And now they were going to bring in this guy, who'd been very successful in the championship before, a completely ludicrous points record with Newcastle um, and um, also took Brighton up. Um, didn't he took Norwich up as well, didn't he? Um, fact check me on that one. But then it all starts to get a bit confusing. Um, 
It's this article here. So this is the Bristol Post, and Gregor McGregor has been very good on this all the way through, I have to say. Um, back on July the 28th, Chris Hewton sat odds on favourite, followed by Alex Neal, Ryan Lowe, um, Dean Holden, 25 to 1. Holden starts to jump, and then Paul Cook comes into the frame as well. He obviously um, gets out of Wigan with the administration, and he's very highly sought after. All very, very confusing. Then, uh, this was just before the weekend, Jamie McAllister goes. So they're starting to move people out and it looks like they're getting towards what they're um, planning to do here. McAllister um, was, well, I think he was, he moved up to assistant to Dean Holden, but certainly um, in the management team there at Bristol City for a while. Out he goes. Um, and then as well, Corey Smith, who'd been a very good player for Bristol City and a particular fan favourite, his contract's then allowed to run down. So getting a bit fractious amongst the Bristol City fans, obviously no information really coming out. It's taking a long time. That tells us one of two things. Either they're being very, very careful and taking their time and um, executing due diligence, or it's not going very well and <laughs> they're taking long because their plans aren't necessarily um, coming out. Um, never mind Freaky Friday. Here is Leaky Friday here. Um, this was just before the weekend. Bristol City offer head coach position to Dean Holden. Uh, so now uh, far be it for me to be a conspiracy theorist, but I, I don't understand why this would be leaked out and reported. And, uh, Nothing against, like I said, Gregor McGregor. He's done a very good job covering all of this. But is there an argument here that um, they're worried how this is going to be received and the deal's already done and they're just leaking it out because um, there was a line in that saying he's going to take the weekend, Dean Holden, to figure out whether he's going to accept the job or not. And you know, if I'm managing the PR at Bristol City, if, if there's any chance that someone who I've offered this job, especially if they've not been a manager before, however connected they are with the club, I don't want to get in out if they're going to reject it. I, you know, I want to announce, oh, this person's proud to have taken this job and step up and all the things that managers say in press conferences. So I just wonder whether that was leaked and whether this is all set up and um, everything's kind of coming out a little bit just to appease the fans over this sort of 37 day um, trial. Uh, this morning, out it comes that Bristol City raid England set up for ex-Preston North End and West Brom uh, bosses. You can see in there, um, it is Keith Downing and Paul Simpson, who I remember playing for Wolves back in the day, but um, going to the um, sort of England representative coaches. So the complete opposite of a Chris Hewton, a um, maybe slightly more expensive in terms of a salary, but really, really experienced and really strong championship CV. No, Dean Holden and then, um, you know, these links to England coaches as well. So look, who is he? Um, well, Bristol City fans will know him, but if you're an outsider like me, um, they're, um, I mean, some people will have a laugh six foot one so they've certainly upgraded in height of their coach um some fans were very interested in lee johnson's height um let's just say uh but played for bolton oldham peterborough falkirk shrewsbury some loans in there as well chesterfield rochdale and walsall short spell at oldham there as boss and then um his most recent job obviously working for lee johnson so uh, plenty of experience there as a player um, obviously, we've been over this um, many times in the past few weeks and in the past season or so about this idea of not going for your tried and tested. You, you hear it said, like Birmingham, I talk Aranka, promotion on his CV. Bosh, everybody loves that, don't they? Alex Neal at Preston, promotion on his CV. Um, however, there's been a fair few examples. We can look at Scott Parker a little bit different. Um, he was a first team coach at Fulham, in as a caretaker. And then when Fulham went down, hired as the full-time boss there, he got up. 
he's a bigger name than Dean Holden, and he was managing a club with year one parachute payments. So similar but different. Uh, Carlos Corberon, similar but different again. Um, everyone's going to look at the Bielsa influence that's trending at the moment in the division. Um, and Huddersfield go for um, a Bielsa assistant. So someone, um, again, inexperienced as a boss. Year two parachute team, but will he actually get the parachute money? Maybe more of a similar comparison there. Most recently, there's Jason Tindall going in as Bournemouth manager. He's pushed up from assistant at the club um, to manager and worked under the previous coach. So maybe the most similar comparison. However, that was only done a few days ago. So it'd be we can't say Bristol City were influenced by that decision because, um, frankly, uh, Bournemouth didn't know they were going to be relegated. Eddie Howe hadn't left before Lee Johnson had gone. So... Um, there is a comparison to be made there in terms of someone stepping up from inside. But again, year one parachute money and maybe in a club that's got that bit of financial money, uh, financial, second time I've said that, financial muscle and maybe some Premier League players, maybe that stability um, is better, whereas Bristol City is not in that position. Um, final comparison I was going to make was Steve Cooper in respects of going to the well of the England representative coaches. You can see there, Steve Cooper was an England under-17 coach. So, um, obviously, uh, Dean Holden wasn't, but it looks likely that um, you're going to have uh, Paul Simpson and Keith Downing um, in those positions. So, is there a comparison there? And, of course, um, some of these names I've mentioned, Scott Parker's just been promoted. Steve Cooper just finished in the playoffs. And, Again, like Huddersfield, we can talk about parachute muscle, but they haven't really invested that money. And Steve Cooper may be pulling a few rabbits out of the hat to get them there. Um, I've said all along, I think this is a really good job. Um, there are the last five years, 18th. Um, and then I believe Lee Johnson started that season. I think I'm right about that um, midway through that season. Um, then 17th, or was it possibly the one? Um, someone fact check me in the comments on that. Excuse me, I can't quite remember. Uh, 11th, then 8th was good progression. Um, just drop off to 12th this season. Look, we get the obvious um, Steve Lansdowne is a wealthy individual there. They've done a lot of work building up the stadium. There's the obvious stuff about the catchment area um, and the ability to draw a big supporter base and increased commercial revenues, things of that nature. However, what's been most impressive, and this is how you can kind of judge a club on the up, is the recruitment recently. Look at all of those transfers there in this recent period that have just flashed up. And most of them, no, I think possibly all of them under Lee Johnson as well. Look, 16, 17. And these are the sales out reading upwards from the bottom. Tomlin, Brian, Flint, Brownhill, Reed. Codger, Kelly and Webster, big numbers there. In the championship, if you do not have parachute payments, the only way you can bridge that gap legally and still comply with FFP is to do really good recruitments and bring in um, money in for transfers. And everybody who's gone up has managed to do it. Look at Norwich with James Madison, Sheffield United with um, David Brooks, and then um, last season, what well, Leeds have done it for a few seasons with um, Chris Wood and Ronaldo Vieira and then Jack Clark um, and um, West Brom. Obviously, Jay Rodriguez went out this past summer as well. I'm sure I'm missing some others there. And they have reinvested at a decent rate. And this is what we've seen at Brentford as well. I mean, you can see Webster come and gone in there. Um Naki Wells recently, Jeju, um, look, Hanno Masengo, 7 million for an 18 year old. Um, you'd hope that will work in the future. Thomas Callas, 8 million for a centre half. So I'm impressed with what I've seen in a lot of areas. So I think this is a really good job. And I honestly did think it would go to a Chris Hewton type character. But there we go. Um, bit of unrest. Um, that was on the 4th of August there. Um, Lansdowne, get your Ashton out. So the ire there at Mark Ashton, um, look, this could just be one bloke and some bedsheets, okay, I get it. But 
Um, you know, it's it exists. It's there. Uh, Mark Ashton is the chief exec, I think. Sorry if I've got his job title wrong, but he's occupying that position above the football manager and below the owner, if you know what I mean, in that in that operational area. Holden, no. Ashton out. I mean, that's clearly the same person. Same bed sheets, probably, isn't it? Um, but a little bit of unrest, maybe slightly understandable, given the amount of time it's taken. Look, we all know if this appointment goes well and Bristol City are up in the top six, no one's going to be bothered about the 37 days it's taken. If the appointment goes badly and they're 18th by November after 17 games, everyone's going to be all over this, aren't they? So the, the proof is in the pudding and context is king here as we go forward. What next with um, Dean Holden? As I said, context is king here. I think it's a very, very good job. I think the Bristol City hierarchy, we're looking at that eighth place finish and moving up. You know, there's only seven above that before you're into the playoff positions. And that's where they've been hoping for. I think this is a good job. I think it's a good opportunity for whoever got it. And Dean Holden has got it now. Um, and I'll say the same pros and cons that I said about Jason Tindall going in at Bournemouth. The pros are continuity. He knows the place. Um, he's known to the players. He's known to the ownership, etc. cetera. Um, is he a little bit cheaper than uh, Chris Hutton or Mick McCarthy um, or any one of those experienced, um, highly tenured guys would have been? Um, he, he knows the ropes. He knows the place. And he's young. And, you know, away you go. The cons are, well, essentially, you're taking a guy less qualified than the guy you fired, who was already working there in, and however harsh this sounds, under a regime that failed because they took Lee Johnson out. Um, obviously, he'll say he's got his own ideas, but he's not going to tear up um, what they've done before because managers always say that when they're promoted through. But it's going to be very, very interesting to see how this one pans out. So that is Dean Holden in as British City Boss. Please get your comments in um, on if you think this is a good hire, um, what's going on at Bristol City in the 37 days, obviously, that it's taken to get this done and be interested in your thoughts on that. If you are a Bristol City fan, I'd love your thoughts. If you, um, whoever you support, get your comments in. Um, sometimes we get um, fairly emotional fans of teams who are a little bit insular in their thinking and they don't like it when an outsider talks about their team. Well, if you feel you know more than me about this subject, then use the comments as an opportunity to educate me and the commenters rather than scream and shout. And I will give my normal plea. Um, I think we're not getting it right online with the comments and the way people behave. So look, if you're commenting on the video and on the channel as a whole, please, Let's try, and I'm not interested in this hashtag, be kind, but look, let's just be civil and talk to people how we would talk to people if we were face-to-face. -face. I'm quite passionate about that. I receive a lot of blunt comments, um, and a lot of people receive a lot worse on the internet, and I think we can do better. So that would be my plea there. And my other plea, well, it's not a plea as such, because that sounds a bit desperate, but please support the channel, support my work here. Um, you can do so uh, via the Super Chat function, um, after the fact on any video that's put up as a premiere, obviously. Um, you can subscribe to me on Patreon as well, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Um, my plan is I have no job because of COVID and I'm really willing to give this a go. Now, I've been doing YouTube a while, but now I've got the time um, and I'm able to take the government grant later on this month. I'm really giving it a go. I'd love to do this part-time or full-time. I don't have 100,000 YouTube subscribers not yet, maybe one day. So I just need some support in the meantime. And then the plan is, as that grows, I'll be able to do some really good exclusive Patreon content down there. If not, no problem. But please like the video and um, get in the comments. But as I say, I'm, I'm passionate about improving the standard of people's behavior online, which is just poor. And the way that the social media companies regulate it is kind of non-existent pass in the buck at the moment. So try and be civil. Use the comments to discuss, debate, and educate if you feel you know more. And if you disagree, there's no need to be a prick or a jerk, is there? 
most thing you can do to help is hit that subscribe button. You can see down there we've got the plaque up at 10,000, but we've now got 11,000 subscribers. I want to keep that number growing. If you're a Bristol City fan and you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. We'll be covering the championship extensively through next season. Anyway, that is quite enough from me plugging, but needs to be done. But what also needs to be done is I need to get your opinions on this. Dean Holden, um, higher at Bristol City. Good luck. Dean Holden, as I would say to any manager, um, if the tide rises, then so do all ships. We want to see people do well. Um, could be a big club there down in Bristol if they can get up into those playoff positions and then anything can happen, can't it? Um, let me know what you think um, and I will see you on the next video. Likely be a transfer update, expecting some bits and bobs to go through the next couple of days. Thank you for watching and get your comments in. Dean Holden. Hired as Bristol City Manager. Over and out.